Georgia, and thanks so much for being with us here today. Thank you for having me. A confidential report uh, was leaked this week that talking about the need for the reinvestigation of up to 16 more cases. There was talk of 25 cases of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. So that's over 40 cases now that uh, there's talk that needs to be reinvestigated. Uh, should the families and people of Thunder Bay trust the local police service to do that? Um, I think under the current circumstances, which um, myself and others have gone above and beyond to try and inform the public on, I would say that I wouldn't be, I think I would be a hypocrite if I were to to suggest or, or state that the, you know, the community at large and the family should put their trust in the current, under the current leadership regime uh, when it comes to, you know, these reinvestigations, um, but also any any investigations or any operations at, at this point. Um, you know, we've seen uh, just over the last few months, um, especially as of recent, you know, there are some serious allegations that have uh, come out. Um, there are currently two concurrent investigations, one being done by OCPC, um, as well as uh, Ontario Provincial Police um, conducting a criminal investigation into the very body, oversight bodies and individuals that, you know, could essentially be in charge of these reinvestigations. And to me, that makes absolutely no sense. Do you think there should be an apology to these victims' families for how these cases were handled? Oh, I absolutely, um, you know, that at very least, you know, an apology isn't going to bring people back, right? These are family members. However, you know, I think that they're in combination with an apology. I think closure is necessary. Justice is necessary, um, you know, and I think given the, the position we're in, especially as, as a board and as the, the various oversight bodies in Ontario, um, you know, and the senior senior leadership, we are in a, in a position to, to do something and to act. If we don't, it's because we don't want to. And I think that needs to be very, very clear to, to the public and to these families is we have an opportunity to act. This is another opportunity to set the record straight, to be able to bring closure to these families, to meaningfully engage and acknowledge what has transpired and what has happened throughout this process. It's it's grueling to say the least. And um, you know, again, just just going back on the, the recent statements coming out and explanations, I just think that you know it's um, it's a slap in the face, to be honest, because I don't think that that's that's appropriate. Uh, Georgia, and as you know, uh, the Deputy Grand Chief of Anishinaabe Aski Nation, Betty Ann Anthony Pineskam, has added her name to the list of people who believe the Thunder Bay Police Service should be disbanded. Uh, what are your thoughts on shutting down the Thunder Bay Police Service? You know, it's never, you know, we're not here because we want to be here. You know, we don't speak and say these things for, solely for the sake of saying there is a real there are real issues and, and concerns here, and there's, there's a real crisis going on um, here in Thunder Bay. And I think we have a job and a duty to do something about it, and that's, that's, that's where we're at. So Deputy Grand Chief Anna Betty, you know, coming out with her, with her comments, absolutely. I support it. That's, that's, that's the last resort, but that's the last resort we're being met with and, and where we're at, because currently if things aren't working, and we can only media release ourselves out of this and deflect and deflect as much as possible. But all that does is it just makes the problem worse, doesn't address, address the core issues of, you know, lack of leadership, corruption. Um, you know, I mean, there is so much that is, that is happening here. How do we expect to see a level of service and a standard of service that's so often between the, the chair and the, the police services board, as well as the chief of police often tout off about when in, in their faces, their own service members are chastising and criticizing the same things. Why are we ignoring this? It's not okay. And so something drastic needs to happen and it has to be more than just another oversight body or another oversight individual as an administrator. I agree with those need to happen, but there needs to be a true path forward in terms of sustainable accountability, meaningful accountability, because right now 
that is severely lacking. And I believe that is a lot to do with why we as a board, and again, I'm not speaking on behalf of any other board members, I'm speaking on behalf of my own experience, but we as a board, you know, seem to be able to, to operate and do as, you know, as, as we please without any degree of accountability or having to be accountable for, for such. Georgian, we'll have to leave it there. Lots, no doubt, to talk about. Uh, appreciate mm -hmm. you taking some time for us today. I really appreciate it, and thank you for your time today as well and raising light to these issues.